Public Accounts Committee begins review of 2025 Appropriation Bill. Training on child-friendly policing underway in Honiara. Pacific Partnership to End Gender-Based Violence Highlighted in special feature to mark 16 days of activism and Miss Solomon Islands attends Wesley United Kindergarten graduation. Hello and welcome, I'm Ms. Batu. The Public Accounts Committee has started its review of the 2025 Appropriation Bill which seeks Parliament's approval for $4.83 billion to fund government operations and services next year. Representatives from key government agencies, including the Central Bank, the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Health, attended the first day of the inquiry. PAC Chairman Gordon Darcy Lillo questioned the Ministry of Finance's optimistic revenue projections, which are based on a 3.0% percent GDP growth forecast for 2025. The Permanent Secretary for Finance expressed hope that revenue would improve despite the central banks and IMF's forecast of slower GDP growth. The chairman pressed further, asking if the ministry might be projecting higher than expected. Um, <laughs> there is no significant um, uh, disparity in terms of the um, the um, uh, basis low forecast low um, although the numbers as you rightly mentioned uh, mr chairman in terms of uh, imf at 2.8 percent and of course central bank can be around the same same rates um, the optimistic that me uh, me mention him i think one of the area that the uh, imf were uh, a little bit uh, well not a little bit but uh, that's why they put it 2.8 because of the informal uh, part of the of the economy. Where, <laughs> according to IMF, they don't have the they don't have the data to to uh, I mean uh, further do their assessment. And this is uh, where Ministry of Finance we put uh, like a hope in terms of uh, performance will be. Uh, stronger next year, especially with the, with the government policy law, uh, productive and resource sector, especially copra and cocoa. Uh, that is where we uh, see some strength uh, to, um, to come in strong next year. The 2025 appropriation bill also sets rules for how the government can borrow money. Borrowing is allowed in two cases, treasury bills to handle emergencies, loans from development partners or local financial institutions for important projects like roads, schools and hospitals. It also gives the Minister of Finance power to approve emergency funds during 2024 if needed. The bill must be reviewed alongside three important budget papers which explain the government's financial policies, everyday expenses and development projects. The Ministry of Infrastructure Development is seeking to increase its workforce in 2025 as it sets out to revive the Public Works Department and commence work on the National Building Code. The Ministry of Infrastructure Development has presented its recurrent and development budget before the Public Accounts Committee yesterday, Monday. Permanent Secretary Alan Lilia outlined the Ministry's plans for 2025 including an increase in manpower to support new initiatives like building code enforcement and the PWD. By mid-June 2025, MMD is experiencing uh, an increase in manpower uh, because of we have the National Building Code and also the Public Works Department that we want to revitalize. So we will expect an increase of our manpower. Uh, chairman, in the you have said in for 2025 we were allocated 56 million for our estimate recurrent budget and 118.2 million for our development budget. Our MID's total income or contribution to the government for next year we are estimating at around 5.2 million. Uh, just, me, just to elaborate on the development budget. 
we have uh, six uh, calculations. The first one is SIG obligation to bona fide project, 12 million. National transport fund, 36 million. Sea infrastructure and transport services program, 14.2 million. Social services infrastructure, 6 million. Economic infrastructure program, 33 million. And national transport initiative program, 12 million. The PAC will meet with other ministries and stakeholders over the next two weeks. Afterwards, a detailed report will be presented in Parliament to guide discussions and decisions about the country's budget for 2025. A five-day advanced training on child-friendly policing is underway in Honiara, aimed at equipping police and justice sector partners with skills to better handle cases involving children. Organized by UNICEF, the training highlights legislative developments and advanced techniques for dealing with child victims, witnesses and those in conflict with the law. Gina Kekea with more details. The training held at the Rove Outback Hotel focuses on international standards, child protection frameworks and advanced policing methods tailored for children. Police officers, justice sector representatives and other government partners are participating in this week-long training. Specifically, what kind of offence involving uh, child victims, uh, more prominently on sexual offences and domestic violence. All other lawyers, where female lawyers now involved largely on those cases. And <clears throat> In relation to me as a male person, male prosecutor, time you attending this for uh, training, I'm also enhancing me too and equipping me with the relevant knowledge uh, and skills to how we shall respond uh, appropriately and professionally to all cases involving very young children and victims of crimes, other witnesses uh, of crime that are young children and those children that are in conflict in law with the law. So that are some of the important lessons that we learning uh, or achieving time in joining now is for training. The sessions include modules on child rights, violence prevention and handling young offenders. UNICEF emphasizes the importance of building a justice system that protects children from harm. This workshop can really help like me for like, the police officers and giving me for awareness for increasing understanding of the issues related to uh, policing child victim, witnesses, um, children in conflict with the law. And I'm also clarifying roles and duties where me for like, police officers me for, like, should do. Uh, the cases for the children, for upholding law, protecting uh, <coughs> rights, blogger, and for their safety as well. And also, this workshop has enhanced skills and knowledge. We have equipped me for like, uh, policemen and women with the necessary skills and knowledge for respond uh, appropriately and professionally uh, to all cases where I'm involving young people. The training also highlighted the importance of ensuring the children are treated with dignity and care in all aspects of the justice system. The purpose of this project is to uh, strengthen the capacity of police officers here in the Solomon Islands in dealing with uh, children in contact with the law. So that means children victims, witnesses and also children authors of criminal offences. Um, this is part of a larger effort from UNICEF and other actors to uh, creating a child-friendly justice system in the Solomon Islands. We know that there are issues of child victims here, for example, as uh, child labor, child exploitation, uh, some issues of domestic violence, some issues of uh, child online violence, and 
what we're doing here is to strengthen the knowledge and the skills of police officers in dealing with those children. And that means not only giving them the theoretical knowledge that they have to know to uh, better deal with these children, but also um, improving the way they deal with young people to uh, adapt their skills and their services to the capacities of the evolving capacities of children. And so this five-day training, um, we are, during this five-day training, we're um, doing a lot of uh, role plays and um, group exercises in order to um, get the participant to improve their knowledge and their capacity. The training, which concludes this Friday, will culminate with the presentation of certificates to participants who are now better prepared to champion the rights of Solomon Island's youngest citizens. Gina Kekea, Tabuli News. Miss Solomon Islands, Elsie Polosovai, attended the closing ceremony for Wesley United Kindergarten today, where she encouraged students during their graduation event. The event celebrated early childhood education with students aged three to eight completing the school year. Older students graduating from the kindergarten will now transition to primary school. Ms. Polosovai and her team were invited as special guests. She addressed the children and their families, sharing words of encouragement about the importance of learning and personal growth. It was my first closing for Come Join Him um, for kindergarten level. Me really enjoy time for me and me come learn him stuck at something too. Me get for story with him the teacher, supervisors, law, other schools where me come meet him there, like Tamlan, St. Nicholas, Agape. And him good that me come learn him what my system law uh, pre primary school uh, children before they're going to primary. And him nice to for come back to old church for me. This is my old church, the Wesley United, and me come for story with him. And I really enjoyed the Queen and King show of Lota Wata Doom, where they dress up in Lota, traditional attires from different provinces. So, yeah, overall, very nice day, and uh, I really enjoyed my time. So, thank you, Tomas, for the invite, and we hope, we wish him well, Lota graduates this year. Headmistress Annie Gallo spoke about the role of early childhood education in shaping young minds and preparing students for primary school. I'm uh, very happy to us, uh, me with the motor staff blow me and our uh, parents blow Wesley United Kingdom Garden. I feel so privileged for having him now. This fella, uh, Miss Solomon, and come attend him now. Official closing ceremony blow uh, Wesley Kingdom Garden for this fella year 2024. Today, uh, so far, I feel like I'm uh, 42 students now graduate for the go up for grade one next year 2025. Wesley United Church in Dangaden has been established law 1992. Plan for OSEM for development law school OSEM. Uh, we fall still uh, find him uh, any place where because uh, now him stand alone school. We uh, don't got him any primary yet so hopefully that okay ta, Big man blow me for where I uh, look up from this fella school. But I want to find any location where I'm going to extend him to school for Mpangare Primary. This visit is one of the several engagements for Miss Solomon Islands as she prepares for the upcoming Miss Pacific Islands pageant, which will be hosted in Honiara early next year. We bring you a special feature to mark the 16 days of activism focusing on gender-based violence issues in the country. In this second series, we highlighted the Pacific Partnership to End Violence Against Women and Girls. This regional initiative promotes gender equality and aims to prevent violence against women and girls across the Pacific Islands. The feature is supported by the Asia Foundation through its Power Up project in partnership with the Pacific Islands News Association, PINA. The Pacific Partnership Phase 2 and the launch of the project Goalkeeper were inaugurated as part of ongoing efforts to address gender-based violence in the Pacific Islands. 
These initiatives are aimed at promoting gender equality and preventing violence against women and girls in the region. The Pacific Partnership Phase 2 brings together various stakeholders, including governments, civil society and international organizations such as UN Women to strengthen support for survivors and engage communities in prevention efforts. For strong every effort now for ending violence and women against girls, we have that epidemic. And big Thomas were here and big Thomas who can be blown in here. Every day, every week losing one fellow woman and die at the hands of partner Blaine. And no good, we're not proud of that one. And that's shame of country. And you may must stand up against what other Jews were at the turn away and turn a blind eye. Yeah? And you will survey that for addressing this fellow challenge. You mean must stop violence before him start. Evidence him partly at us. You may need a combination of response, but also prevention measures. And that have now basis for Pacific Partnership Phase 2 and uh, Project Goalkeeper. Australia has been a key financial supporter of the Pacific Partnership, providing funding to help implement programs that aim to prevent gender-based violence and promote the empowerment of women and girls throughout the region. Today is particularly significant because, as you know, it's the second day of the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence, a global campaign dedicating to raising awareness and encouraging action to end violence against women and girls. As we come together here today, it feels especially fitting that we are surrounded by passionate advocates and organizations who are committed to making Pacific a safe place for all. Phase two of the Pacific Partnership builds on the foundation established during phase one, which focused on addressing community attitudes towards gender-based violence. Um, with the phase one support too, we have also a support team, family support center to be able to send over um, counseling staff and others. I think there were two representatives from provincial committees that have attended the regional um, training program that are um, normally conducted by Fiji Women's Crisis Center as the secretary to the Pacific Women's Network and Violence Against Women uh, based in Fiji. So, um, we feel like looking an improvement in terms of our staff capacity building. So that project also support us with those um, capacity building. Organizations like the Family Support Center continue to provide essential support services to survivors and play an active role in shifting community perceptions on gender-based violence. Their efforts align with the broader goals of the Pacific Partnership Phase 2 to address the root causes of violence. 14 years old for a perpetrator, him raping somebody with him very young, him no make sense to me. Eh? And one case, some of this one eh, for me later, me like him no matter all them, I'm asking a donor now. Eh? For me, for like extend them now, this is awareness raising no children. We want to protect children all of Malaita and Solomon Islands. And me, me ask them, you and women if also support them, if I look program for me for that, to watch them or children here. Yeah. So that they may address about children and then me for a man, me for a story with them, but they perpetrate the very young children. Phase two continues to engage sectors such as education, faith and sports to challenge harmful norms and raise awareness of gender-based violence. Because of violence against women and girls, it is really affecting the fabric of our family, communities, and thereby affecting the lives and education and security of our children and youth. Gender-based violence is a complex issue influenced by a range of factors, traditional gender roles, unequal power dynamics, economic dependence are some of the contributing causes. In addition, alcohol abuse, mental health issues, and gaps in law enforcement can exacerbate the problem, making it difficult for survivors to escape abusive situations. Of course, we would like to concentrate law, continue for supporting coordination and governance for the safe net, um, and especially the provincial safe net. 
uh, we have established now in nine out of our ten provinces. Yeah, one for province, no more yet uh, for uh, Ministry Hemkasem, uh, Reynol and Bellona, but we hope that we follow by survey able for doing that uh, um, next year. The Pacific Partnership Phase 2 and Project Goalkeeper represents significant steps forward in the ongoing efforts to end gender-based violence in the Pacific. Uh, we remember one big day when uh, the football team law Australia, the Matildas, yeah? women's football team, below World Cup only. They are now biggest sporting event law history in Australia. More people watch watching that fella a lot of television than any other sporting event low history in the country today. And we look at the low small boys and men para waving flags for this other team, yeah? That me small boy, it's just not possible for imagining that color situation. Project Goalkeeper, spearheaded by UN Women, focuses on the issue of violence against women in the context of sports. Through research, the project seeks to identify the challenges faced by women in sports and develop strategies to ensure their safety and inclusion. Gina Kekea, Tabuli News. In sports, Ben Akwai has made history by becoming the first referee from the Solomon Islands to be nominated for the International Federation of Football History and Statistics World's Best Referee 2024 Award. Aukwai is the only nominee from Oceania and is one of the 20 referees worldwide shortlisted for the prestigious award. His nomination reflects his dedication and skill, including participation in key international seminars, the IFFHS World's Best Referee 2024 Award will be presented in January 2025. And that's the news for today on Tavoli News. If you have an interesting story to share or want to know more about our services, email us on newsdesk at tavolinews.com.sb or sales at tavolinews.com.sb. I'm Ursula Nongebatu. Thanks for watching.